Hello, hi, welcome to Unitary Designation. Um, so, apparently, Elon Musk is buying Twitter. It's all over the news. Um, don't know if he's actually bought it yet, but apparently, Twitter is, as of seven hours ago, Twitter is set to accept Elon Musk's forty-three billion billion U.S. dollar buyout offer. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, hopefully, Musk is sincere in his commitment to freedom of speech and wants to use Twitter as the public marketplace that it envi- the public marketplace of ideas that it envisions itself to be. Um, I'm pretty big on free speech, so the implications. Now, whether or not he follows through with that is another uh, matter, and whether or not we should have unitary billionaires own our means of communications like that, it's also a different topic. But in terms of, like, what uh, the implications are for, like, freedom of speech, it's not like Twitter is this sort of, like, self-evident champion of free speech right now. So, you know, here's hoping that that sort of... I don't have any numbers on shadow bans or bans or anything like that, but the censorship of ideas is detrimental to a free-flowing exchange of information and uh, it just uh, just the democracy in general. And, and this... I'm not the first guy to point this out, and I won't be the last, but I, it bears repeating because it just happens to be very essential stuff. We, freedom of speech is essential. In order to think, you have to speak because you then get to find out what of, which of your ideas is is wrong or or poorly formulated or incomplete, and that's why I have this YouTube channel so I can say the things that I think right now and then you guys can call me out on it and if if elon musk buying twitter means that twitter will become more of a a platform for tolerating free speech i i think that's good i don't think it's unidimensionally good it might be complicated reasons why it's it presents a lot of problems that might not be self-evident but yeah, I think I think that's that's a good thing. Um now whether it turns out good is anyone's guess. Who can who knows the long-term uh, consequences? Maybe Twitter becomes a new platform for freedom of speech and maybe it doesn't. Maybe this is the start of the end for Twitter. Maybe a uh, a large number of users will resign, but yeah, no, I'm I'm optimistic. I'm I'm reading um John Stuart Mill's On Liberty um these days. And uh it's a book about the necessity for tolerating m- among other things. It's the a book about the necessity of tolerating someone's um utterance of incorrect uh, opinion or opinions you disagree with. And the degree to which you can stomach hearing things that you disagree with that's essentially the extent to which you can have a democracy because when you when you hear things that you that cause you mental cognitive distress that requires you to evaluate why does this cause me cognitive stress not just observe the fact that it does you have to articulate a response saying why that is disagreeable to your sense of ethics or morality. And then the other person has to presumably um, listen to what y- wha- what your objection is and then come to his own or her own long-term reevaluation based on that feedback. And that's, that is democracy. I mean, we're all just... S- without communication, we're all you know isolated specks alienated alienated specks of 
we need the feedback mechanism of that freedom of speech provides to be able to live in a democracy. Um, if I'm, if this take is that I'm doing right now is wrong, then I need to know that. And uh, to the extent that this is a, a move for freedom of speech in our society, I'm all for that because we've we've regressed from freedom of speech. Used to be a left wing issue back in the 80s or in 70s. It used to be about letting the working class say what they needed to say politically. How it ever became associated with the the right wing and the alt right, I have no idea. But it's important, not because. Not because we're letting trolls insult people to the or bully people online to their to their demise. That's not that's not the point. We're we're letting people say their stupid things before they get to the point where they feel they need to perpetuate that kind of violence. And I mean letting our words do combat is bad. But it's nowhere near as bad as doing actual combat. I think it was Jung who said that our ideas, we fight with our ideas so that our ideas can die instead of us. And that's uncomfortable and horrible as that sometimes is. It's way better than the alternative, which is to die. And nobody sane wants to go out before their time. So, I mean... Restrictions apply and your mileage may vary, but uh, yeah, freedom of speech is essential, not just for democracy, but also for like your own sanity, because you get to hear other people champion for what you believe in, and uh, you get to hear why people think the stupid things that they think. Like I've studied philosophy extensively, and one of the things that I learned is that while my current way of thinking might not be the ultimate correct one. I had a lot to learn from hearing people I disagreed with tell me honestly how they got to their positions. Like, I didn't agree with their assessment of morals or ethics or politics, but I could understand how they would find the axioms that made up their arguments compelling enough to support the conclusion. And studying those axioms that made up their arguments, like... You have to have a profit incentive where people won't do action. You have to have a competition hierarchy or otherwise people won't be motivated to compete their goods and services. And you have to offer that at market price. And hearing the axioms that underlied their political position was really useful for me. Not because I agreed with their conclusions, but because I needed to understand how people who are essentially me, came to conclusions that I would never hold. And freedom of speech made me hear them and made me think that, oh, what I have here right now isn't... might be true, but it's not complete. It's necessary, but not sufficient. I, I, I need more data. I need people to tell me their wrong thoughts so that my wrong thoughts can cooperate with their wrongs and create something closer to well truth in the sense that it's something we both hold in in agreement in agreement so if if the twitter buyout turns out to be a, a boon to free speech like Elon Musk says it will be then then I support it even in theory but if it just leads to more draconian measures of censorship, then we'll see. I, I'm not... I never have complete faith in any one man or woman or person. Uh, so I remain skeptical. I, I don't have a... I don't have a very active Twitter life. I think I check it once a month. And uh, most likely won't start trusting it with all my personal data, but it is a... It is an interesting step. Historically, it's a very interesting step. It's the first time we let a... Well, it's not the first time, but it is the f it is the acquisition of a public speech platform by a billionaire. So it's historically relevant, no matter what the consequences are. 
So these are the these are the same old party lines for why freedom of speech is important. I, I'm I might make a video about free speech some other time, but this was just a off the cup off the top of my head sort of ref, uh, brief reflection on the Twitter Musk acquisition. So yeah, okay.